With winter 2018 wrapping up, I'd like to talk about some of the shows that aired this season. I haven't done this before, but I feel as though I really need to now. I need to because this season was really good. Like, really, really good. In fact, in my opinion, this was the best season in recent memory, and that's saying something considering how much I enjoyed summer 2017. Sure, we had the normal cash grab nothing shows, and in fact, we had a fairly sizable amount. But more important than those are the good ones that stay with us. First and foremost, this will be by no means a comprehensive list of everything that aired this season. In fact, I only watched a handful of shows, but out of the dozen or so that I did watch, I completed most of them. Compared to some, that might not be a lot, but for me, it's a fairly sizable amount. Certainly the biggest selection I've had for several years. Normally, I start a handful of shows and drop most of them in the week-to-week -week rush. I'll be discussing each show in reverse order of how much I enjoyed it, with my favorite of the season at the end. I won't be spoiling anything explicitly, but if you prefer to go into shows blind, maybe skip this video. At the time of release, not quite all of these shows will be over, but I'd rather release this a touch early and let it stay relevant, rather than have it being buried under piles of spring 2018 content. And, with no further ado, let's go. First up is Citrus. If you've seen my video on it, you'll know that I'm not a big fan, but there's some force bringing me back every week. It has some strong draws, beautiful art, the occasional likable character, some very nice inner character drama, but all in all, you just can't get past the horrible characterization done in earlier episodes. It also began to drag near the end, along with the introduction of Matsuri, bringing her own plethora of narrative problems and general grossness. To be honest, I only watched the last few episodes because I'm only talking in depth about shows I finished this season. Definitely not a terrible show, but I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it. Nanatsu no Bitoku. It's a show. I watched it. The fact that the episodes are only five minutes each has a major role in that. Yeah, that that's all. Soriori Motoi Basho, or A Place Further Than the Universe, is great. I had heavily considered putting it further up on this list, but after much consideration, here it is. Before doing a bit of research and writing this, I had thought it was ranked much higher, but it's actually only 12th on the most popular show of the season, though admittedly it has an 8.19 score, making it the 6th highest scoring show of the season, losing out only to Violet Everton in terms of first season shows. But too much talk about metrics. Soriori is a very cute show with many reasons to watch. There's been a bit of debate in the community as to how to categorize it, but I'd weigh in to say that it's a coming-of-life-slash-adventure story with a lot of moe elements. From that perspective, I think that it absolutely hits the mark. Telling the story of Kimari's quest to change her life, and her subsequent trip to Antarctica with her friends, Soriori will make anyone want to do something crazy. It has a fairly unique art style with some incredible sakuga cuts. It's definitely worth it. This next show feels a bit like a copy, because I only watched it a few days ago in a two or three part marathon of the first 11 episodes, then waited a few days for the last episode. But hey, it did air this season, so let's go. Kokoku is different. It's kinda weird in the fact that it feels so different than what it is. And by that, I mean that it feels like some crappy sci-fi Steinsgate or Mirai Nikki ripoff that's just riding the coattails of something better. Frankly, I'm not even sure why it feels like either of those shows, it doesn't really have a whole lot in common with them, but somehow it just gives off that vibe. Yet, despite that, I'm hesitantly enjoying it. It has a pretty interesting concept with some really neat ideas, with the best girl to hold it all together. Judy is cute, though not the cutest anime girl of all time, or even this season, but rather, she's best girl for this really novel concept. Personality. When people talk about strong female characters, they're talking about Judy. She can kick ass when she needs to, and is super reliable, and is just generally all around cool. I also really like her totally not a lab coat. Degashikashi Season 2 this high on the list? Yeah, I'm a bit surprised too, to be honest. I only gave Season 1 a 7, but decided to check out this season primarily on the merits of the incredible character designs. 
In fact, I love these designs so much, I've long been considering releasing a video just gushing about Hotaru and Saya, two absolute top tier waifus. Short of that, I've been looking for a reasonably priced Hotaru figure to no avail. But what's important is that Season 2 made some wise changes. First and foremost, episodes have been cut down to 15 minutes rather than the full length 24 minute runs. The sketch nature of the Gashikashi definitely benefits from the shortened runtime, cutting off right where the jokes are about to feel stale, rather than dragging on like it sometimes did in Season 1. Despite the shortened time, Season 2 is also far more ambitious where it comes to telling an overarching story. The mid-season disappearance of Hotaru is a great segue into the introduction of Hajime Owari. Owari, like Hotaru and Saya, has great visual appeal in that unique design of Dagashikashi. It's a funny, charming show and deserves more attention. If you want to check it out, I'd say to watch season 1, but honestly it's not really necessary. Next up, Takagi-san is another last minute addition to this list. I watched episode 1 when it came out, enjoyed it, and then didn't watch any more for weeks. Then, bored one day, I checked out episodes 2 through 9 and added it to the weekly list. The middle school antics of Takagi and Ishikata will warm any heart for a few reasons. First reason, it's cute as hell. Watching Ishikata get flustered by Takagi brings back waves of nostalgia at your middle school crushes, and is just a great little example of young love. It's also really nice to see a show with clear Lali and Shota appeal, absent of all fan service. The show can get a touch stale at times, and it would be nice to see Nishikata win every now and then, but even if it keeps up as is, it's still better than similar shows. And if you want a similar manga, I'd also recommend Ijira Naide Nagatoro-san. It's a similar premise, but with more mature undertones. Still really cute though. Now, Darling of the Franks is a bit of a mixed basket for me. It keeps teasing to become great, but it never quite gets there. The teenage antics are charming, and most of the characters are likable enough, but I keep expecting... more. It just doesn't feel like a Studio Trigger show to me, and that might be Studio A1's hand showing, but I was just expecting... well, more. Let's be real though, these robot designs are literally the best thing about this show. Why can't I buy them? Isn't the point of robot shows to sell toys? I want a Genestia mod. Maybe a Delphinium one too, and a Strelitzia. Oh man, I'm gonna be broke if they do ever get released. Well, anyway, this is the only 24 episode series on this list, so I'm still really excited to see where it goes from here. I just hope that it answers some of the questions that it keeps presenting. Violet Evergarden was something special. Really special. I've been looking forward to it for a few months based solely on how incredibly beautiful the trailers were and it absolutely held up to that impossibly high standard. But Kyoto Animation didn't just settle for debatably the best looking show of all time, they wrote an artistic masterpiece to match it. I'm a pretty emotional viewer, and I regularly get these rushes of emotions in my chest, my eyes get damp, but not many works have actually made me cry. Up until now, it was just Wolf Children and Anohana, but Violet Evergarden is now one of those works. In both episodes 10 and 11, a few tears were shed, and maybe more so by the time this video comes out and the show is over. The show's structure of placing Violet in the vicinity of so many of these burning people has its way of boring deep into your heart. There's a character death that was seen coming from a mile away, literally from his first on-screen minute, that nonetheless was absolutely heartbreaking when it came. I literally cannot stress enough how much you need to watch Violet Evergarden. It's one of the only three shows on my anime list that I've given a 10 out of 10 to. So I've already talked about Yudo Camp Delta in depth before on this channel, so if you want some more detail you can check it out there. But even still, I just want to talk about it more. Because just like the not clickbait title of that video, I genuinely think that this show is the pinnacle of what the moe genre tries to be. Is it perfect? No. I feel as though some of the jokes are a little bit cringy, or that it slightly drags in the middle few episodes, but Yudo Camp is the most I've ever enjoyed a moe slice of life. A bunch of the comments in my video make an observation that really holds true. Yudo Camp is unnecessarily realistic in mundane ways, 
yet presents so many romantic ideas and images. With that all being said, not everyone needs to watch it like they do Violet Evergarden. If you hate Moe or Slice of Life, you can skip it. But if you enjoy anything with those tags even remotely associated with it, I'd highly recommend you at least give it a try. And now here we are with Amega. It's funny. The two shows in my last video were at the top and bottom spot of this one. The two shows that everyone mentioned in the same breath turned out so different. Almost a little bit poetic. Either way, I'm happy to report that this show is ending as strong as it was. It went in a bit of a different direction than I had originally thought, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. A lot of the things I realized while writing that last video have helped me to enjoy this show more. For instance, now that I can see what the show is doing by contrasting an immature story with an older man, we get a genuinely incredible story of growth. Double that down with some stellar art and my favorite opening song of the last few seasons, and the result is an absolutely phenomenal shoujo romance story. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this seasonal wrap-up video. What do you guys think of the season? What were some of your favorite shows? Did you think it was all around strong? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you like my content. And if you really liked it, you can head on over to patreon.com slash senpizzle and help enable me to make more of it in the future. Or at least stay up to date with what I'm doing over on twitter.com with the handle at senpizzle. So, yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.